by Ambalin Nakani, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to be talking all about the B vitamins. We're going to start with niacinamide. This is otherwise known as vitamin B3. Now it's a very stable and multifunctional vitamin. At 2%, it's been clinically proven to reduce transepidermal water loss by up to 27%. It keeps the skin moisturised and strengthens against barrier damage. It also stimulates collagen production for anti-aging benefits. While at 5%, it's been clinically proven to reduce the appearance of age spots by over 25% in 8 weeks. Typical use is 1-5%. to It's stable in light and oxygen. Best used in a pH range of 3.5 to 7.5 and at, at less than 70 degrees C. It easily dissolves in water. Look for cosmetic grades low in nicotinic acid to reduce potential skin irritations. It's one of my favourite vitamins to use and add to formulas for some multifunctional benefits even at 2%. The next vitamin I'd like to introduce you to is panthenol or vitamin B5. Now this is a great skin moisturiser. It also has anti-inflammatory benefits and soothes skin. But it's also really well known for its effects on the hair. It's been clinically proven to stimulate epithelization and help heal minor wounds. At 2.5% it can provide improvements of up to 37%. It strengthens the hair and provides moisture. Typical usage rates are 0.5 to 5%, with a pH range between 4 and 7.5 and at it at less than 70 degrees. It's liquid form usually and readily water soluble. It's also stable in light and oxygen. The next vitamin I'd like to introduce you to is pyridoxine hydrochloride also known as vitamin B6. Now this material is really good to balance out sebum levels, but it's also great in hair products and it can help enhance the efficacy of anti-dandruff actives. It adds to the healthy appearance of hair and can reduce excessive oiliness on the skin. It's stable in light and oxygen. Typical use rates are 0.05 to 0.3%. Best used in a pH of 4.5 to 7, but should be added at less than 40 degrees. It's also readily water soluble. The next vitamin I'd like to introduce you to is biotin. It's also known as vitamin B7, or sometimes known as vitamin H. It's really great to support keratin structures, so it's particularly useful to strengthen fine and brittle hair and can be used in those cases associated with hair loss. But careful with claims, you need to keep them in the cosmetic realm. It's sensitive to oxygen, but not light. So it's best packed into an airless serum dispenser as a finished product. Typical usage rates are 0.05 to 0.5% in a pH of 5.5 to 8, and you can add it at less than 70 degrees. It's also readily water soluble. The next one is folic acid or vitamin B9. Now this is particularly useful against aging in general, but also against photoaging. It's particularly useful to help combat DNA damage that's been induced by the sun, so it's great for after sun products. It's sensitive to light, heat and heavy metals, but stable in oxygen. Typical usage rates are 0.1 to 0.2% in a pH range of 6.5 to 8. It should be added at less than 40 degrees and is also readily water soluble. Now I want to introduce you to an exciting innovation by DSM. It's called Boplex VH and it's a multivitamin complex. It comes as a powder. Now it is sensitive to light, so I wouldn't normally have it exposed, but I'm just showing you for the purposes of this video. It contains vitamins B3, B5, B6, C and E, 
all in the one material. And this, of course, makes it really easy to incorporate a multivitamin story into your formulation with just one product, which also makes dispensing and manufacturing easy. I'm going to be showing you how to create a beautiful multivitamin serum today. Now, this absorbs well, it feels beautifully light on the skin, and when you actually apply it, it has this instant burst of moisture in the skin. So this one is definitely going into my bathroom cupboard. So let's show you how to prepare this multivitamin serum. It also has some very specific pH requirements. So I'm going to be showing you how to formulate using an active with a fantastic product story and accommodating some of those formulation considerations. So let's get started. So now we're going to start by heating our water. And to this, I'm going to just be adding some sodium citrate. I'm going to be creating a buffer solution uh, because this product needs to stay in a very tight pH range of 6.8 to 8 over its shelf life to ensure best efficacy of the Boplex VH. So I'm starting um, with this and then I'm also going to start heating my oil phase. I'm going to add my pH tolerant gum to my glycerin and you would have seen me use the slurry method before. So while these are heating, I'll just talk you through, I'm actually using 5% of the Boplex VH. The normal usage rates are between 0.5 to 3%. I'm using it at 5% so that I can have an effective input of 2% niacinamide. And this helps give the really good anti-aging benefits, reduces transepidermal water loss by up to 27%, keeps the skin moisturized and strengthened against damage, it also stimulates collagen synthesis. It's still a great source of vitamin B5, which supports epithelialization and skin repair. It's also moisturizing, anti-inflammatory and soothing for irritated skin. Uh, the B6, of course, for its skin balancing. And then vitamin C and E for a synergistic antioxidant benefit for the skin. Because this is a serum consistency, I'm just using the propeller blade to create my emulsion. Now when this has cooled below 35 degrees, we can add our active. Preservative. Fragrance. And antioxidant. Stir until it's homogenous and cool to 25 degrees and then we need to pH adjust. Now the pH adjustment on this is very important because to get the best efficacy out of this active we need it to be between 6.8 and 8 and because we are going to be adjusting the pH and also using a buffer solution we have of course used an electrolyte resistant polymer uh, because there'll be a lot of electrolytes introduced into this formula and it also needs to suit the slightly higher pH that this product will carry over time. And there you have it, a multivitamin serum based on the beautiful B vitamin story in one simple product. You can, of course, use any of these B vitamins on their own or in combination. Today's example was just an introduction to a great material that actually provides you with a multivitamin story by using one simple material. Just remember the compatibility issues of each of these B vitamins, the pH range that they're suited to, and of course, if you're using the Boplex, the pH range it requires as well. Take care when adding to make sure that any temperature limits are adhered to, and of course, ensure appropriate storage and dispensing of your finished product if they're incompatible with light or oxygen. 
Here finally is a table summarising the B vitamins for you and what they're best suited for. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the B vitamins. Happy formulating!